This is too fucking sweet right now. Yeah, I'll just set it here. Anyway, Texas has nothing to do with my life story, does it? Ha 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 ha! None of it takes place in Texas. Ah! It's at the part where I was driving through Texas, which makes up about um, 0.000001% of my life. So, why the fuck am I talking about it? Who knows? Did I sound like Draven Bane just now? That sounds like his speech pattern. Um, anyway, fuck it. Um, mm, what was I talking about? I was talking about my teenage years. Teenage years, yeah. I remember there was a computer, this, I think, uh, there was a few things that helped me get through my teenage years, though. Um, Marilyn Manson, which I still like, I still like Manson. I think he's, uh, he's very, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, if you look at his songs, there's a lot of wordplay, there's a lot of allusions to um, historical events and philosophy and stuff like that. But if you're, like, a teenager and you hear that shit, and you're, like, even the least bit above average intelligence and filled with aggression, then wow, that is just, like, he becomes your messiah. I mean, that shit is incredible, and he becomes, like, your father figure, because no one else around you can possibly be. So that was one thing that got me through. The other thing that really got me through was internet porn, because... I don't mind telling you that I had and have some very bizarre fantasies that are too complicated to explain in this video. Maybe I'll get to them in some other video. Um, some of you already know them, I think, because you guys did a little private investigating and found stuff. And it's, uh, it's easy to misunderstand, but, but that's fine, though. Uh, I don't really mind if people know, but I'm not going to tell them myself. Um, but it, it, suffice it to say, I have a number of very strange fetishes, and and the, having access to the internet and being able to look them up and see that other people had them, and that it wasn't is really as uncommon as I would have thought if I hadn't had that outlet. That really did a lot to set my neuroses at ease and um, really alleviate a lot of that, that, that inner tension. And I was, at the time, in my teenage years, I masturbated about six or seven times a day, easily. I mean, always. I would, I would, get, out, I would get out of class, say I needed to use the restroom, go into the bathroom, get in one of the stalls, jerk off really quick, then go back to class, because otherwise I would not be able to maintain cohesion of thought. And I really didn't maintain cohesion of thought anyway. I was very scatterbrained then. I mean, people think I'm bad about it now, but back then I was totally, I mean, I just did not have a natural human thought process whatsoever. Things made huge schizophrenic leaps, and I did not think, I mean, I was always an atheist, as I've said numerous times, but I haven't always been a rationalist, and I'm, I'm still not, uh, because I just don't have, I don't know if I have the capacity for that, but I'm a lot more rational now than I used to be. And I definitely try to be rational. Um, but in those days, I, I was very much like, you know, I, I, sometimes I was a solipsist, sometimes I was an existentialist, um, and then I found um, Ayn Rand when I was about, 16, and today I'm very critical of Ayn Rand, but at the time she was just what I needed. And I didn't read any of her novels because her novels are fucking terrible, and I maintain that to this day. I've tried to get through Atlas Shrugged numerous times. It is the worst book ever fucking written. She was not meant to write fiction. Anyone who says otherwise is an imbecile, with the exception of Demonique666, who apparently likes that book for some inexplicable reason. I'm assuming she likes the philosophy and not the writing, because the writing is fucking atrocious. Um, but I did read The New Intellectual, which contains little excerpts from her novels, but not really story-based excerpts, but philosophy-based excerpts. And I liked her philosophy. Later I found out that she wasn't quite as rational as she projected. She was anti-homosexual, she had a number of weird quirks that don't really fit into the whole rationalist motif, in my opinion. 
But I did like objectivism. I did like core elements of objectivism because it subtracted a lot from my confusion. Because I was one of those people that said, A is X. And she said, no, A is A, motherfucker. And I'm like, oh. Well, you know, that makes a lot more fucking sense. Thank you, Ayn Rand. So I got to credit Ayn Rand for setting me straight and, and at least, you know, at least giving me a little bit more of a of a direction for my thought and a little bit more process. Um, is any of this interesting? <laughs> is anyone watching still? Okay, anyway, fuck it. Who cares? Uh, if you're not watching anymore, fuck you. Um, so, I got to that stuff, and then later on I got to... Um, other philosophers that were very much reality-based. Um, I've always admired Nietzsche, even though I can't read him. I just kind of read summaries of what he said, and then just like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, and uh, I, I got to start, I, I started, you know, looking into skepticism, started reading, um, you know, uh, science magazines, although I retain next to nothing, unfortunately. I, I wanted to be a scientist for a time, but I'm just terrible with math and numbers. It's 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 a total mental block for me. I have the math skills of a fifth grader, probably. Um, excellent wordsmith. Not so much speaking extemporaneously, as you can see, but if you actually set me down in front of a keyboard, I can come up with some really brilliant shit, both in the department of Poetry, prose, technical writing, whatever, you name it, I'll, I'll rock and write it. I'll rock and fight it. Um, <sighs> parched. Oh. Oh, fuck, I lost where I was. I wasn't, pro I probably wasn't anywhere. Um, I'm obsessed with paradoxes. Does anyone else like paradoxes? Uh, I, I'm always making up paradoxes. A lot of times they don't even make any sense because... Oh, and by the way, quit you mis atheists, quit misusing paradox. Because I hear a lot of atheists presenting things about God, like could God, you know, make a burrito so hot and spicy that he can't eat it or whatever. No, that's not a paradox. A paradox is a statement which on the surface seems untrue, but when you look deeper, it is true on some deeper level. And um, those are conundrums that you're talking about. That's a conundrum. That's not a paradox. It may be a paradoxical conundrum, but it's not... It doesn't... It, no. They get... Okay, so just don't do that anymore. Um, but I love paradoxes, and um, I'm always making up paradoxes. It's one of my hobbies. I'll come up with little statements that are paradoxical. Um, my favorite one that I've come up with so far, and it's really not that good, so I don't know why it, it's my favorite, but... Um, being perfect is just another imperfection. And I've had that one for a while now. I think I put it, I think it was originally a lyric to one of the songs I did, I wrote. I used to write song lyrics all the time before I wrote poetry, um, because, uh, of course I wanted to be just like my hero Marilyn Manson, and I wrote all these song lyrics, um, and people said they were good and I should write poetry because I have no musical talent and I can't sing. See? Um, so I started writing poems instead, and eventually everything I wrote became poetry. And I started reading other people's poetry because I thought it was kind of weird to write poetry and not read it. And so I started reading other people's poetry, and I did like it. I looked, especially Stephen Crane and Edgar Allan Poe, my two favorites, who couldn't be more different in terms of style and approach and, and even message. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, what was I saying? Everyone's favorite poet is Edgar Allan Poe, though, because everyone knows Edgar Allan Poe. So if you say to someone, what's your favorite poet? And they, like, think for a second, uh, who do I know that's a poet? Edgar Allan Poe. So when people say Edgar Allan Poe, you kind of get an alarm bell. Bullshit! But in my case, it's not. I really do think Edgar Allan Poe is one of the greatest poets of all time. I love that one. Dream. My favorite poem is Dreamland, which I read to Exile the other day. She really liked it, too. Uh, there's a line in there. 